Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Alabama is a number four seed in the 2024 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament and will open play Friday in Spokane, Washington against number 13 seed Charleston in the West Regional. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into Tider Insider TV brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Visit Tuscaloosa. I'm Gary Harris alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com. Listen, people, don't panic. <laughs> Rodney did go on the portal, and he was considering a move to another website but has decided to return to TiderInsider.com. Yeah, and stay here. Stay yeah. Here at WVUA. Yeah, yeah. So we dodged a bullet. In the portal, out of the portal, back home. Uh, we're Kidding, but we've got big portal news coming up later on in the show. But, Rodney, we, uh, we're going to start with basketball because I think – you and I talked about this on my radio show on Monday. I think Alabama fans should be pleased because the Tide um, finished tied for second in the SEC in the regular season but got blown out in the quarterfinal round of the, NCAA, of the SEC tournament uh, last Friday in Nashville by Florida. Uh, gave up 100 to the Gators for the second time this season. And in the SEC, they only had one close loss. Now, they won a lot of games, okay? But in the SEC, at home against Tennessee, the rest of the time they got blown out of Kentucky, they got blown out at Tennessee, they got blown out at Auburn, they got blown out at Florida. Rod, they're a number four seed uh, in the West region, as we said. This is a team that um, has got a chance to go on a run. But let's talk about what happened on Friday. Uh, Alabama taking on Florida, tied hoping to make a run to the SEC tournament final on Sunday. They jumped out eight to nothing in this game, but from that point on, it was all Gators. Uh, Florida, as we said, hung 102 points on the tie. They went at 102 to 88. Rodney, what went wrong? Well, <laughs> you know what? Listen, they gave a lot. A, of points. a lot. How about that? <laughs> no. Uh, look, Florida's a really physical basketball team, Gary. And at the end of the regular season, they were playing really, really well. They were a hot basketball team, uh, you know. And, and and I think Alabama, obviously, as you mentioned, down the stretch. Don't really know exactly what it was. They Obviously, they had some injuries. We talked about we thought they were a little bit dead-legged there at the end. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, as you start to move in now to this, the NCAA tournament, they'll be rested, they'll be healthy, and ready to go. Yeah, you said something that's key. I think the fact that they played on Friday, they don't play again until Friday evening, 6.35 Central Time out there in Spokane. Exactly what you said, a chance to get some people healed up, a chance to get their legs under them. So I, I think that you never want to lose, and Nate Oates said that, but you try to put a positive spin on it. Now by losing Friday, they get more time to get ready. What are your expectations for this team in the NCAA tournament? He's got two sweet 16s already. Of course, one of those teams was a two seed last year, the number one overall seed. This is a four seed. How far do you think Bama can go? Well, you know, that's a great question. I would say this, Gary, right now, you know, as you look at it, you, you obviously take it one at a time. I mean, that's that's how you have to look at it because you really don't even know what the next round's going to be, although you, you know it's either going to be St. Mary's or Grand Canyon. But, uh, you know, Alabama being healthy again, are they hot? Do they shoot the ball well? That's going to be a real key. Obviously, Alabama's really explosive. Now, the key is, is Charleston scores a lot of points. Mm -hmm. Defensively, Alabama's given up a lot. So this could be a real shootout in, in, in this round one, and you never can predict those. Hopefully, they get by round one. I think if they do, I'm going to say, Gary, they've got a really good shot to go into the Sweet 16, then we'll see from there. All right, let's get to some player um, thoughts. Coming out of that SEC Tournament loss to Florida. The Tide, of course, obviously trying to hit the reset button, but that's not the way they wanted to play up in Nashville. And so here are the players now talking about that loss and trying to turn the page and get ready for the NCAA tournament. Told us we, we kind of got punked. Uh, it's like the same thing that happened at their place like a week ago, a week and a half. Uh, so, I mean, we, we just got to be better. Uh, we started the game all right, but once we hit that six minute mark, first half, I think we gave up a 21 to 3 run. We got we can't let that happen. Honestly, I honestly like uh, Coach Oates' uh, challenges. Um, maybe all is not, you know, great, but I mean, that's, that's you got to put that to the side at times. I mean, you, sometimes you need to hear that. That's something that, you know, we need to instill within each other. Maybe say it in the right way so coach don't have to say it but I don't think I don't I wouldn't take it you know out of proportion with him saying anything like that because that's that's a way just another way for him to motivate us and I, I think you know it works at times all right Rodney let's just have a quick thought on Alabama and and playing defense because the tide can score we know that 
Um, they can put a lot of points on the scoreboard. Coach Oates has been saying all year we need to play better defense. It's kind of hard to reinvent yourself at this point. So I guess you just have to go out there to Spokane against Charleston and just play with maximum effort effort. on both ends of the court. Yeah, And he's used that word a lot, effort. And I think he feels like this team defensively can give more effort. So, uh, you know, I know he's been pushing for that. I'm like you, Gary, though. You're not going to recreate yourself where you are right now in this, this point in the season. So if Alabama can play well, play better defensively, uh, and they shoot the ball well, look, I think this team's got a lot of potential. And, and another thing I'll say, too, uh, we've talked about this. They have seemed to kind of bounce back from adversity a lot this season. And you mentioned this on your radio show on Monday, uh, and, I, and I think you make a great point. This is kind of like a new season for them. And I think with that new start, it, I think it gives them a great opportunity to really bounce back. All right, Rodney, good analysis. It's now time for Coach Talk. Alabama is playing in its fourth consecutive NCAA tournament under Coach Oates, but its NCAA tournament experience with this roster is limited. Three players contributed to last year's run of the Sweet 16, Mark Sears, Nick Pringle, and Ryland Griffin. Other players like center Mo Wagi, guard Latrell Reitzel Jr., and guard Aaron Estrada have NCAA tournament experience at other schools uh, before they got to Alabama. Crimson Tide head coach Nate Oates says experience, though, is a factor, but it's not the biggest X factor to making a deep run in March. I think it helps to have some tournament experience, but a little bit it helps. The, the biggest thing is how much do we want to play for each other? How much do we want to keep playing together? How good a defense do you want to play? Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of distractions around the NCAA tournament, which makes it great. It's the best sporting event on the planet. Like, you know, over a three-week stretch, there's 40 minutes where the best team is going to come out on top. And there's another 40 minutes where the best team comes out. And Nate Oates is going to be the Alabama head basketball coach for a while. On Monday, the UA Board of Trustees Compensation Committee approved a contract extension that runs through the 2029-2030 season, and will, he'll be paid $5 million the first year of the deal. He's going to be one of the five uh, uh, highest-paid coaches in the country. That's going to go all the way to 7.55 million in the last year. The contract extension, this is big, Rodney, includes a buyout of $18 million for the first two years. So, in other words, if somebody comes calling next year or the next year, they're going to have to pay Alabama $18 million if they hire Greg uh, or hire Nate Oates away from uh, Athletics Director Greg Byrne. Coach Byrne said it's the highest of uh, Greg Byrne said it's the highest of any coach in the country based on his research in regards to buyout. Rodney, uh, Nate Oates has done a, a great job here. Uh, it seems like every year he's getting a new contract and extension, but that's what happens. When you do a good job and you're in demand and your name's being mentioned, other schools uh, kind of drive up the price, and Alabama wants to keep him, so they're paying him. Yeah, and good good point, Gary. I think, look, he's, he's gone to four straight tournaments. He, he, Alabama went into last year's tournament number one seed. He's done some fantastic things. I think when you look at this year, when you look at this season, the turnover he had on his staff, the turnover he had on his roster, and where he has them right now – I mean, I think he's done a fabulous job. You're right. I think a lot of schools, uh, he would be a hot commodity right now. And to lock him up, mm-hmm. I think his uh, long term is a great move by Greg Byrne once again. And it's not like Alabama sneaking into the tournament. They've been a one seed, a two seed, a six seed, and now a four seed. So they're getting in easily. All right. And as Alabama prepares for its first NCAA tournament game, you know, you're always working on the roster. Uh, Crimson Tide has added a shooting guard from the transfer portal for next season. Former Pepperdine guard Houston Millette committed to Alabama today. Millette, a Three-year starter at Pepperdine, averaged 14.7 points, 3.2 rebounds, and 2.4 assists per game. He shoots better than 41% from three. So he can knock them down, man. And he's a perfect type player for this offense. He's currently number six in the transfer portal rankings for 247 Sports, and he has one year of eligibility remaining. So uh, that's a pretty uh, good-looking player, Alabama, that's adding for next season. All right, Alabama and um, the women are back in the tournament as well. Christy Curry's got Alabama going every year. They are going to be a number eight seed out in Austin, Texas. They'll take on the nine seed Florida State, who's very good. That game is going to be 430 on Friday at the Moody Arena. The game will be aired on ESPN2. And if Alabama wins that game, they're more than likely going to get the number one seed Texas there in Austin. But at least, uh, Rodney, they're back in the tournament. And uh, like I said, you know, March Madness, there was a time here where neither one of them were in the tournament, men or women. Yeah. Now they're, we just expect them both to be in. March Madness really is uh, special at Alabama right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. It really is. And good to see both teams. Hopefully, hopefully they can both make a run. All right. Still to come on Tider Insider TV, baseball gets a big win uh, in a series in the SEC's opening weekend. Also, Crimson Tide football coaches talking about getting raises and, and 
big deals. Uh, the football coaches are going to be well compensated. Kalen DeBoer at the top of the list. We'll have that for you. And a little bit later on, we'll get into your phone calls, emails, and tweets. There's the phone number 205-348-WVOA. Again, 348-9882. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV will return after this timeout. Welcome back to TITV with Rodney Orr. I'm Gary Harris. Alabama football after taking off for spring break. Back to work this afternoon, Rodney. Uh, their fourth practice of the spring. Tomorrow is pro day in the morning. That's a big deal. Then on Thursday, Coach DeBoer will meet with the media following practice. So back at it. No uh, media opportunity today, but uh, all uh, – all is well, it seems like. It's, you know, just three practices in the books, but you're hearing really good, positive vibes are coming out of that building with the players and the coaches. Very positive. I, I think that uh, we had that 30-minute viewing opportunity, of course, on Wednesday of that first week of practice. The really upbeat, high tempo. You saw it yourself, Gary. I think that uh, when you look at the, the, the way those three practices went, a lot of people that have observed the practice said, hey, they went as smoothly as any practices we've seen around here. So, great organization. I think the players are really responsive. And well, and I think these next 12 practices are really huge. Yeah, this new football staff, well, most of them are new. There's a couple holdovers, but they're going to be paid very, very well, as you would expect with the best program in the country. Nate Oates got a big contract extension and raise, and the Alabama Board of Trustees approving more than $25 million of contract salaries for the athletic departments. Head coach Kalen DeBoer. $10 million in the first year of his eight-year contract. That puts DeBoer already as one of the top coaches in terms of salary in the country. Defensive line and associate head coach Freddie Roach gets a two-year extension. He's up to $1 million a year uh, and uh, $1.1 million in a second. The coordinators making a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but they're going to make less than what the coordinators made last year. Uh, Nick Sheridan, the offensive coordinator, $1.35 million, and uh, Kane Womack, the defensive coordinator, $1.55 million. All of the, the coaches' salaries are are in line with the highest paid in the country, Rodney. But again, I said this on my radio show earlier this week. Uh, listen, our coach is making a ton of money. Is it completely out of whack with what they were making just 10 years ago? Yeah, but you can't blame the coaches. And if you're going to run with the big boys, and Alabama's one of the big boys, then you got to pay the going rate. Well, it's all out of whack. I mean, yeah. you, you, you talked, I think, you know, Gary, you could say, uh, I'm not going to say they're underpaid by any means, but with the way college football is right now, the demands on assistant coaches, the demands on head coaches, I mean, it's it's really difficult with the portal, managing your roster, all of these different things, not to mention developing a team. So, uh, yeah, they're paid well, but it's it's a tough job. Yeah, give me an idea of how they've shot up. In, 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 let's keep, let's definitely keep it up with inflation. Rodney, we remember in 2006, Mike Shula made $900,000. Mm -hmm. The head football coach at the University <laughs> of Alabama. That was just 18 years ago. That wasn't 50 years ago. That means if your head coach wasn't making a million dollars and nobody on the staff, coordinators were, you know, in that day and age, $200,000, $250,000, a lot of money for a coordinator. You know, there were still position coaches at that time that, at SEC schools that were making less than $100,000 a year. Those days are gone. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think Mike Shula is the first football coach in the history of the University of Alabama to make less than the basketball coach. He did. Coach. Mark Godfrey made a million. Yeah, so. And, hey, listen, now the basketball <laughs> coach and the football coach both, they're making plenty, plenty of money. But um, – you look at, at Nick Saban and what he was doing here, and he was the highest paid coach in the country. And I know I had some people that have called me on my radio show and shot at me, shot text at me on social media saying, how does Kalen DeBoer, you know, deserve $10 million a year? Well, he just took Washington to the national championship game. They were giving him all kinds of contract offers to stay there. That's what you have to pay if you're going to get a Absolutely. coach with his – Resume. He's already a proven head coach. You're not bringing a guy in saying we think he can do it or we hope he can do it. He's done it. Yeah. I mean, if he's your guy, I mean, that's that's what it takes to get a top coach. And there's 104 and 12. I mean, it, it, like you said, Gary, in two years he was what 25 and three yeah. at Washington, yeah. and and you know led them to obviously the national championship game this past year. Uh, Nine years as head coach, seven of these years. He's won 11 or more games. Yeah, he's proven. All right, let's get on to the uh, latest portal news. Rodney, I tell you this, I, between NIL and the portal, it'll make your head spin. Caden Proctor, who uh, left Alabama to go home to his home state and play for the Iowa Hockey Eyes, is back in the portal. And this was first reported by Scott Dotterman, the Iowa beat writer for The Athletic. But now word is coming out that he's going to come back to Alabama. Now, the question I have, and he was a starter at left tackle as a true freshman, is 
Is he going to enroll now? Is he going to be able to come in in the middle of the semester? Uh, will, he, will he be here for some spring practices? Will he have to enroll in the summer and be here for fall camp? I don't know, but he's coming back. He's coming back. That's, that's the word. That's what we hear. Caden Proctor will be back in Tuscaloosa, and you start looking at the, what that does to your offensive line, Gary. Then all of a sudden you've got Caden Proctor back. You've got Tyler Booker back. You've got uh, Jaden Roberts Elijah back. Pritchett. You've got Parker Brelsford, yeah. who was an all-Pac-12 center last year. You've got and, – and look, I want to say this. This too. James Brockemeyer's had a fantastic yeah, start to, to spring. So, uh, you know what? Maybe that offensive line with some of those young guys, yeah. Wilkin Formby, Miles McVay, yeah. some of those other young guys that are competing, has maybe may a real uh, strength. And I mentioned Elijah Pritchett, who's got a Elijah quite a bit of game Pritchett, experience. That's right. You know, one thing too, and I, I just wonder, because I guess there's no contracts, word is that when he left Alabama to go back to Iowa, um, that Iowa had some NIL money for him. So a I lot, saw somebody on social media. I guess, I guess he doesn't have to give that back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But, hey, he's a good football player. The grass isn't always greener. And let's just be honest, this is no knock on Iowa because they've got a pretty good track record with sending guys to the NFL too, especially tight ends. But um, to be developed at the highest level, he's probably better off here. Well, and that's kind of what I understand is, you know, he gets up there, he goes back to Iowa, and he realizes, hey, you know what, I've, I've been in Tuscaloosa. I've seen what a big-time program. Miss. I played for an SEC mm -hmm. championship that we won, played for basically what amounted to a national championship opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, what does Iowa score? Two points a game? They, that's <laughs> about right. Maybe. I mean, that offense, whew, it was awful. All right. Uh, Bama baseball doing something it had not done since 2016, and that's when an SEC weekend opening series. And they did it against the number five team in the country. And they did it after losing the Friday night game, 11 to 3. Bama bounced back to win the Saturday and Sunday games against the Tennessee Vols. That Sunday game was a thriller. Back and forth, Rodney. It was 7 to 6 in the ninth. Tennessee had the bases loaded with two outs. And. Aiden Moza got a strikeout swinging to end the game. Alabama's at Alabama State tonight. Then they go to Georgia this weekend for an SEC series. Softball uh, did something that uh, they've been doing the first two weekends. They avoided a sweep. The Alabama softball team avoided the sweep as they were over in uh, Athens after losing the first two games to Florida. They were able to come back and win a game here in Tuscaloosa. Then in Georgia, they lost the first two games, and they won on Sunday. So they're 2-4 and four in the SEC, but have not been swept in an SEC series since 2013 and swept at home since 2002. And we'll be back with more TITV. Your phone calls are coming up. 205-348-9882 is the number. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to TITV. We're getting short on time, so let's get right out on the phone lines. Rusty in Demopolis leads us off. Hey, Rusty. Hey, old buddy. How y'all doing? Doing right. Uh, doing well. Okay, I'm going to question about the place kicker this year and how is Milo coming along with uh, this new offense. I'll hang up and listen to you. Yeah, uh, Connor Talty is probably going to be the guy. Well, I say probably. We need to allow, I guess, the competition to take place. But uh, he's a guy that was highly recruited out of Chicago St. Rita's. He was a freshman last year. He kicked a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, he's an outstanding high school kicker as far as Jalen Milrow is concerned. Those first three practices, I understand he performed really, really well. Again, I think as, as we pick up here, the installation, Gary, of the offense, it's going to be really challenging for all these quarterbacks. So uh, the scrimmages will tell us a lot more. All right. Uh, let's get to the email question of the day. It's brought to you by KDM Service Corporation. When it comes to your heating and air conditioning needs, KDM Service Corporation serves your family like our family. What net what will carry the Alabama men's and women's NCAA basketball games? That's Jim and Sparks, Nevada. It's going to be True TV for the men's game, 545 Central Time on Friday, and the Alabama women will play their game on ESPN2. All right, we'll be back with uh, another phone call or two if we can work it in right after this. No Nick Dunlap, no problem. Alabama men's golf just ran away with the Linger Longer Invitational over in Gainesville, Georgia. Very prestigious tournament. They, they dominated the field. They f uh, finished 11 shots ahead of second place, Virginia. And Jonathan Grizz, who shot a 62 in the opening round, he wins the individual title. This Alabama men's golf team, boy, they really made some noise. This was against an impressive field. Congratulations to Bama men's golf. They'll compete in the Valspor Collegiate Invitational next week down in Palm. City, Florida. All right, welcome back into the Tider Insider TV. Let's jump right back out on the phone lines, and our buddy Bill is with us. Hey, BT. Hey, Gary Harrison, Rodney, how are y'all doing? Doing fine. Go ahead, Bill. I'd like to question 
Gary and Rodney, uh, uh, do you think we uh, they need to change the offense on the on the uh, NCAA? I mean, on the, on the basketball team. Uh, BT, I, I, I think, you know, and the, I think Bama's going to be fine. I think the offense is fine. I, I do think they're probably still trying to tighten up on, on defense, but obviously it helps when you make shots. But I think they're going to bounce back. I think they're going to beat Charleston on Friday. Yeah, I do. I do. I think so. Um, look, I, I think, BT, they've, they've kind of responded to adversity. I think they look at this as a new opportunity. I think they're going to play well. All right. Do we – Let's get an email in before we have to go to the break. Uh, we got an email ready to go. Tammy in Atlanta, Rodney, any chance that Caleb Downs were to <laughs> – listen, return to Alabama 2025. You uh, might have laughed at this, but then we saw yeah. the Proctor news. Yeah. Listen, man, you can go on the Proctor. I, I mean, you go on the portal and come back. I saw where running back that started at Ole Miss went to Miami. He's probably going back to Ole Miss. So, never say never, I what guess, was my answer, Rod. Proctor just got the keys to some vehicle, really expensive vehicle. Uh, uh, Downs did. Downs, uh, yeah, Range Rover. Downs, yeah, Range yeah. Rover, yeah. So uh, – I don't know. Maybe he drives that Ranger over Ohio State, got to form back to Tuscaloosa. You never know these days. I guarantee you he'd be welcome back. He's one of the best football players in the country. All right, thanks for the phone calls and the emails, and we'll be back to wrap up TITV right after this break. Well, Alabama Gymnastics had a great score on Sunday at Oklahoma, 198.025. Outstanding. Not good enough, though. Oklahoma's number one for a reason. They scored 198.775. Still, though, excellent meet for Alabama, who uh, has a lot of momentum as they get ready to go to New Orleans and compete in the SEC championships. That'll be on Saturday, March 23rd. The competition will be aired on the SEC Network. Well, time flies when you're having fun. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Tider Insider TV, presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. A reminder, you, uh, if you missed any of tonight's show, We'll have a replay at 10.30 after the news at 10, or you can find it anytime online at WVUA23.com. We're going to leave you with a hype video for men's uh, basketball as they get ready to head into March Madness. This was posted uh, by Coach Preston Murphy. Have a great evening, everybody, and we'll talk to you again next Tuesday on Tighter Insider TV. Not finished. Job finished? No, I don't think so.